everybody and welcome to the Moto2 Catalan Grand Prix full race replay. We weren't able to bring you this live, but we've gone back, we've done it commentary with all the timings as well. And you can sync up as well with the klaxon to start the world feed intro and your starting grid. But if you want to sync up with us when the lights go out, just get your recorders ready for when those lights go out and press play. Let's go over then for full race watch along of the Catalan Moto2 Grand Prix. It's the Moto2 Catalan Grand Prix. Jake Dixon is on a pole position. Alongside him, Aaron Canet and Ayagur on the run down towards Turn 1. Manuel Gonzalez alongside Albert Arenas and Femin Ayagura take up the second row. Third row of the grid, Alonso Lopez, Sergio Garcia and Pedro Costa. Fourth row, Barry Bolter, Sam Lowe's is 11th and Songkat Chancha takes him 12th. Fifth row of the grid sees Philip Salak alongside Joe Roberts and Cicina Vietti. Sixth row, Jeremy Alcoba, Zonta van der Goldberg and Marcos Ramirez. On row number seven, it's Bo Ben Schneider alongside Tony Arborino and Senna Aguras. On row eight, Lucas Tulovic, Dennis Foggia and Rory Skinner. And then further down on the ninth row, it is Matteo Ratio alongside Alberto Sura and Borja Gomez. He's got a long lap penalty as well, three places to add. On the 10th row, Isaac Cavara, Nozain alongside Yere Ruzzi as well. So Borja Gomez thinking of a three-place squid penalty as well for Q2 infringement. The warm-up lap is underway. Jack Miller watching Jack Attack at the sidelines as Jake Dixon leads them down towards turn number one. The warm-up lap is underway. And now the fingers are crossed that we're actually going to have a good race. Can Jake Dixon convert another pole position to another win. His second win of the season is on the line here at Catalonia. First, of course, came last time, well, last time, two races ago, uh, as well, not the British Grand Prix. We, he crashed out of that one, we don't talk about that, but the Mazar, he was back at Assen, the TT Dutch Grand Prix at Assen. He took victory. He wants a race win here in Catalonia. It's coming to him, it's possible, and will race two become at the Circuit de Barcelona Catalonia here in Catalan, Spain. Let's have a word with our commentators over at TNT Sports. Michael Averton, Gavin Emmett. Probably going to be the biggest effect in, and uh, yeah, just managing the, the tyre consumption. And uh, I want to know about fuel consumption as well, uh, or maybe, should I say better, Jake Dixon last race was great off the start. And it seems, it sounded like they'd worked out a different way of setting up the electronics so that it actually worked in the early part of the race. Yeah, as well. which was interesting to hear. So perhaps a little bit more engine brake to assist the stopping of the bike when you've got heavy fuel load, the, the pushing, the plowing sensation he was getting in previous rounds seemed to be eradicated, which is fantastic news for Jake because the, the one and a half to two seconds he was losing in the first three or four laps give him an uphill task to get back to the very front of the field. So it, if they fix that and he starts from the pole and he does jump well off the line, then everything's sort of aligning well for him. It's going to be attritional, isn't it? So what about Pedro Acosta coming through? What about Vietti from 15th? What about Arbolino? What do you see from those three top runners? Yeah, honestly, I went through the grid yesterday and I thought there's at least 10 riders who could stand on the podium today. I do think you look at the first two rows of the grid and all those guys have the speed, then it is a cost on the third row that could come forward. We know his race pace is fantastic. But then you look at the fourth row of the grid and you think Sam's got really good race pace, late race pace, as does Sankiat Chandra. But then Vietti on row five, he's coming forward without a doubt. So yeah, I think we're going to be treated to maybe an attritional race, but a bit of a, a different sort of a, an outlook here for Moto2. The tension beginning to rise then. 21 laps are coming for Moto2's Catalan Grand Prix here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya in Spain. The red flag is at the front. Further behind, we'll get the green. Jake Dixon on pole position. He's on the right-hand side of the TV pictures, left-hand side of the track. Dead center is Ankanat. And Ayagura on the left. Staggered formation, red lights on. 
It's lights out in Catalonia. It's a great start from Jake Dixon. Aaron Cannon is away evenly, but coming up from the second row, it's Ayagura. But Jake Dixon will take the lead of the race. Ayagura will go into second position. Manuel Gonzalez trying to take third place away from the outside of Aaron Cannon towards turn number one. Few trail breakers coming in, a few of them going in deep. Nobody's gone down. Uh, taking further back, Matteo Ratio is taking a few positions. Gonzalez has taken second place as well. Vietti and Guevara have dropped further back. They They've run each other wide at the top of your pictures as they come up towards turn four. Jake Dixon leads. Manuel Gonzalez is second. Ayagura is in third position. Aaron Cannon in fourth. And how long can Jake Dixon manage at the front? This is his best start as well, just like in Austria before he went down. And if someone dropping down, the, it's Lucas Tulevich who's dropped down into 29th position. Alberto Sur is right at the back. Rui Skinner, Senna Aguras is in there too. So they haven't made it too great of a start. As Everyone's fiddling into positions further back. Guevara making moves up there. Time screen's too small to see, and he's getting further, but really good start. Jake Dixon leads from Gonzalez, Agura, Canet, Lopez, Garcia. Yes, up into sixth and into the breaking zone for turn 10. Ayagura. Runner up in last year's championship, crashing out of course back at Valencia, still closing in, still finding the attacks he needs to. It's another great battle. Jake Dixon leads Gonzalez as we complete the first lap. Let's turn to Alberino. He's 11th at the moment. Acosta leads Alberino in the championship by 12 points coming into this round of the Catalan Grand Prix. So there's a lot on the line. Yellow flag, third sector, and Sura has stopped, apparently with a technical issue. So, um, unfortunately, We've got that coming through. Yeah, Alberto Sura stopping the technical issue. Down towards turn one. The slipstream battle begins once more. Like, just like we saw in Moto 3. Jake Dixon leading the way. Up the inside comes the 21. That's Alonso Lopez uh, trying to get through an Aaron Canet, uh, who's dropped two places on the start. Lopez up two. Arborino up nine places. Biggest winner, biggest loser. Barry Baltus down seven places. Arborino up nine. Sam Lowe is up into 10th position. Jake Dixon holding the lead, but one more Gonzalez is on the inside line at turn four. And Gonzalez takes the lead here at Catalonia. But Dixon back on the inside with the cutback. He's not holding anything back today on the gas gas. He's giving it the gas gas as he comes down towards turn five. Brief yellow flag was out as well uh, in that final. Now it's out again. Sector three. Is it Senna Aguras? Uh, well, I'm not too sure actually on that one. I'm not sure. Joe Robert's got a track limits warning. I know that's come up on the timing screen, but I'm not sure what else. That's on that one track limits warning, but yellow flag out third sector. That must be Alberto Sura, but he's in sector two. So what the damage was at sector three, I don't know. We're just approaching that point on the track now as we come down towards turn 10 once more. And Dixon going defensive. But doesn't need to. Gonzalez is too far back. Canet still in third position. Little twitch there from Manuel Gonzalez. He's fighting it a little bit. It's a 21 lap race. We've got 20 laps to go. This is lap two of 21. I know we don't have the two time encounter this week. That's because it was too tiny to read. Uh, so it just blurred it out. So we've gone back to the, just having 20 laps to go. Into the last corner. Dixon, Gonzalez, Canet. Yellow flag sector three again. No overtaking. And there's nobody in that third set. It must be Alberto Sura, but Dixon, a 144.8 and one across the line. Gonzalez was a 144.711. And down towards turn one. Dixon goes to the run and time to go defensive. Gonzalez thinks about a move on the inside line, doesn't work out. Lopez gets ahead for third, for fourth place, sorry, ahead of Agura. Aaron Kinnett's taken third position as well. And they're slipstreaming it together, coming through turns two and three. There's Pietro Acosta, 144.384. Acosta with the fastest lap of the race so far far as they turn in once more. Alberto Sura has now officially retired from this round of the championship. We knew that was coming. We knew it was a possibility as they escape uphill now to what the top three running so together as we drop down through five at Seat. Dixon, Gonzalez, Canet going together. It looks like there's going to be another Moto2 race like we saw last time out as well. And everybody just keeping it smooth together. Dixon, Gonzalez, Canat. 0.7 now, the gap between them and Lopez. So it's still running together. It's still not as disconcerted as we saw in previous Moto2 races. Canat trying to look around the outside of Gonzalez though, into the braking zone. It's not gonna work out to turn 10, trying to go around the outside. Trails in, Dixon stays ahead. Oops, battle further behind. That's uh, gonna be Garcia. 
getting ahead. No, it's Agua passing Garcia. Agua getting ahead of Garcia. Lopez, Alonso Lopez staying in fourth position on the timing screen. You've got to remember which one's which at the moment because the timing tower colours are wrong to what we're seeing here because Lopez on the brighter colours, whereas Agua on the sort of BAR Honda style uh, beigey colour as well. A bit like my trousers actually up in the commentary box colour. Uh, so that's how you remember Agua's bike colour uh, as well on the ID Epsom Honda Team Asia bike. That's why Honda Team Asia is a Honda colour, the beige flags as they come through. That's Gonzalez running it deep, trying to go around the outside of Dixon at one. Hasn't worked out. It's giving the door open to Aaron Canet. He's going to try and swing around the outside in turn number three. It still hasn't paid off. Dick Gonzalez holding the inside line like crazy. Uh, coming through three into four at Repsol. He's left it open a little bit. Canet's going to stick a wheel up the inside line. Hasn't worked out. Beautiful bike colours, by the way. The yellow, the sort of the caramel yellow and Ikea blue on the front there of Manuel Gonzalez. Beautiful bike livery. Really is a hark back to what we saw back in the late 90s, early 2000s in MotoGP racing. Beautiful livery. As we see Lopez, Agua and Acosta in the battle for fourth position now as they exit onto the back straight towards Campsa at turn nine and down the long straight to the long sweeping left-hander at turn 10 with a double apex, folds back over to a, a long right-hander at turn 11. Quite a good start then so far as they come into the breaking zone for turn 11. So Dixon, Gonzalez, Canet at the moment running together. Oh, and Lopez having a bit too wide a moment. Let's check in what the TNT guys thought at the start. Well, there'd be a bit of a turn up for the books. Rumours it might be the new MT Helmets team uh, moving up from Moto3. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. It's a, it'd be a massive surprise for a Japanese rider to move away from under Honda's wing. It's a brave thing to do. Perhaps he just wants a little bit of a change. Obviously, he's been there with the from the Asia Talent Cup all the way through. He sort of stayed in those colours. Maybe it's just a new livery he wants, Gav. Well. <laughs> Two your new liveries. Gonzalez is having the go as well. Gonzalez going to go for the attack in towards turn one and get ahead of Jake Dixon. He's done it nicely. Well done, boy. Gonzalez through and he's taken it brilliantly. Dixon's going to try and have an attack back. No, Manuel Gonzalez beautifully takes the lead of the race. It's a perfect move. I don't even think Jay Dixon will be arguing with that one. Lopez having a battle as well with Acosta Agura. Arenas getting involved as well. Canet's on the back of Dixon in towards turn two. Canet's going for it on the inside line. Does Dixon know he's there? Yes. Beautiful move from Canet as well. Dixon's down uh, into third position. And now Acosta battling with Ayagura. Physically making contact between the two of them as well. Acosta goes through to fourth. Lopez versus Agura in a battle between each other and they're touching now as well track limits warning for Roberts and this was further back there's Acosta going through and there's Lopez touching with Agura and Acosta touched with Agura as well earlier on so this is just epic racing and Dixon's not leading this one through because Gonzalez versus Canet are gonna stay together as they come into the braking zone for turn 10, the long triple apex corner turn 10. Up the inside goes Sergio Garcia and Ayagura on the outside, not going to work out. Canet's got to run here. He's going to try and pass Gonzalez. Oh, and four start wide. That's not Albert Arenas. That's Alonso Lopez. I think he's lost. No, hang on, there he is. So who got four start wide? It was Sergio Garcia, yeah. Garcia's been passed by Albert Arenas. He got four start wide at, through turn 12. So. He's lost a bit more time. Across the line then, lap six begins now. 16 laps to go. Gonzalez can add Dixon down towards turn one. Arenas has now passed Garcia. So that changeover has happened. It's going to be a bigger change towards turn one though as everybody dials into the positions. Really strange situation. Something was choking on the bikes there down towards turn number one, I thought I heard. Gonzalez, Canet, Dixon, and there's Arenas in sixth. Ayagura is in seventh position. And Gonzalez under pressure now from Aaron Canet. Down towards turn four, Repsol. Gonzalez keeves the inside line. Canet. Oh, I can't hold it. Albert, oh, no, there's Anagurus. Seno Gurus will be given a long lap penalty for a short cut at turn two. So a short. Oh, hang on a minute. And Yero Ruzi has been given a long lap for a short cut at turn two. That was on the opening lap. We saw them take it through. So. They've been given the long laps at the start of the race. As they attack through once more. Battling going on and an insane amount of battling is happening. As they will come through. 
And the racing will continue on the attack. Manuel Gonzalez, best career finish for fifth place in this championship, of course, as they come in towards turn 10. Dixon's just holding back. He's saving some tyres. He remembers how to do this from the Dutch GT. We had just before well, the last race before the summer break. It wasn't even halfway we had a summer break. And that's how, how busy the second half of this uh, Moto GP, Moto 2, Moto 3, well, the, just the, the Motorcycle World Championships are going to be. We wound out Moto E uh, next time out at San Marino yeah, in seven days' time from when we're doing this. So the San Marino Grand Prix is going to close out another championship and the crowd another champion as Alonso Lopez gets a track limits warning issued to him as well by the FIM MotoGP stewards. Ruzi and I get that's not sure, sure, that two penalties coming to on the board now. And there goes Sergio Garcia on the inside line in turn one, passing Ayagura. So a nice slipstream battle manoeuvre. It's a, such a good track, this, for action and overtaking. It is delivering again and again and again. Gonzalez, Canet, Dixon, the top three in the battle so far. Let's check in with T. To get to the front, and it does hurt him in the latter laps of the race. So at the minute, Jake can just let Aaron, let Manuel push the pace, push the envelope a little bit. He's got a marker in the braking zones. He's got someone to chase around the fast flow and touch the racetrack. So he gets a bit of a breather, and he does. Walter's track limits morning. So it's Silverstone, didn't we? For Aaron Canet, where he was leading for much of the race, and then for me, I'll get saying from nowhere, but had pace right in the latter stages, came through and cleared off. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a good tactic, and it does pay dividends in Moto2 especially. It's a, a long race around here, 21 laps, and in some ways, because the temperature is a little bit lower, it won't be as physical. The riders won't be as sweating as much. It's not dripping into your eyes, but it is still the surface temperature of the tyres increasing every time around the long hang. It's turn three and four. We just got a first glimpse of Tony Avellino, Sergio Garcia fighting. On the inside of Alonso Lopez, Garcia now will be up into sixth place with that move. But Tony Arbolino currently, well, he was 11th across the line, but he's lost uh, three or four positions he's behind Barry Baltas and has just dropped to 15th. As it stands, he's only picking up a point, but because Acosta currently is only in fourth place, not a dramatic loss to the Spaniard, but you'd imagine that Acosta's still got something in the tank here. Yeah, it's the momentum, though, that's gone out of Arbolino's title challenge in the last few rounds that he's slightly worrying. He's not able to turn things back around since the summer break. It's been a, a bit of a struggle and previous to the summer break. So just um, maybe it's the talk of the MotoGP seat that was looking like it was going to go his way, took his focus somewhat, or maybe just trying too hard to get things back on track. So, um, yeah, working hard in this race and just scrapping for the, the lower point oh. scoring positions. Wow. And a move going on there as well as Aguero passes Lopez and Lopez on the inside they go wheel to wheel up towards turn four and Lopez stays ahead nice little slip streaming battles uh, to contend with whoops and Lopez nearly drops in and Agura's right back on the inside line to get through outside into turn five downhill Agura goes for it and gets ahead of Alonso oh front and he's gone wide Alonso comes back through and he can't do it Agura stays ahead for, se for seventh position that was Beautiful couple of corners from the two of them, like literally pitch perfect. It was not being given a single room to breathe. Really nice manoeuvre from the two of them there. As they come down, Dixon's in third. Uh, Aguras has done a long lap penalty. So it has been completed, which is, I suppose, thumbs up news. Oh, got a yellow flag, sector three. Yellow flag, sector three. And I'm not too sure what... Oh, it's uh, Senna Aguirre. Aguirre's crashed out. Senna Aguirre has crashed out of the race. Now, how's that happened? Rider OK, but we've got a, a crasher. And it is Senna Aguirre who's just completed his long lap penalty. And now he has crashed out of the race. So that's temporarily brought out the yellow flags in Sector 3. There's the confirmation on the screen. He's crashed at Turn 7. So that's at the chicane. Uh, just before camp, sir. Very strange part of the track to go down at. I presume he's lost the front on entry. Lopez back ahead of Agura, though, for seventh position down at turn one. So at least some things are not changing. Uh, Chantra has been given a track limits warning. So has Femin Ayagura. So, and Bo Ben Schneider's into the pit lane. Uh, ben Schneider into the pit lane. So, uh, I think he's, yes, retiring. Ben Schneider's out of the race, I've uh, been told. So, Bo Ben Schneider is, is into the pit lane and is retired from the race. Not sure what's happened there. 
Uh, so we'll get into that when we see it. But there, we, there, there he is entering the pit lane. So he's out of the race. We can see it on another monitor up here. So that's three retirements already on lap nine of 21. We're one third race distance. As they attack back through, more than one third half distance, 13 laps to go. Coming up on halfway at lap 10.5. So sector, end of sector two, next lap around, we're halfway in the race. As Gonzalez attacks it through, the race leader's still there. It's a four-way fight. Gonzalez, Canet, Dixon, Acosta all closing in. And Canet wants to have a go. Dixon wants to have a go as well. Gonzalez is going to be mugged uh, in a few seconds' time because he's going to have absolutely no room down towards turn number one and have no one to slipstream, have no one to go off. So it's about to be a very lonely situation for him as he exits the last corner of New Holland, past the magnificent grandstand. And Gonzalez now will have absolutely no slipstream. Aaron Kellett, Jake Dixon and Pedro Acosta will. Canet's sitting in it now. Looks to the inside line down towards turn one. Lights on the brakes. Who's going to take it? Canet's going in deep and Canet takes the lead. Goes a bit too wide. Gonzalez tries to cut back around the outside into three because it comes the inside. Hasn't worked out. Aaron Canet takes the lead then with the Catalan Grand Prix here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. Gonzalez second. Pedro Acosta's past Dixon. Acosta's up to third. So Dixon has gone from pole position to fourth place, but they are still battling together with 12 laps to go of the Catalan Grand Prix. Into turn five now, and Canet's just not looking comfortable out front, is he, as well? He's just taken the lead, and he's had a small twitch coming in towards uh, turn five. Into six, now into seven and eight. This is where we just saw uh, so our takers crash out, must have dropped the front somehow. Ah, oh, yeah, there's a few little tyre marks at the bottom of the screen there, so I reckon he's lost it. We haven't actually seen the TV picture replays about that. On the run down towards turn 10 then. And I don't think we're going to see anything here. Good move. Let's go back over to TNT. But new role inside the RNF, a brilliant team, more of a sponsor acquisition role, partnership there. But um, yeah, the remains of the Pons team, it looks like, will go to the MT Helmet squad, who are currently a Moto 2 team, and they will expand to grow into Moto, Moto 2 and I believe remain in Moto 3. So yeah, interesting, shame to lose the Pond squad, but an interesting move for the MT Helmets team. And they're, it's only their second season in Moto 3 and already they're stepping up to Moto 2 as well. Because we had thought they were going to drop their Moto 3 team, but it, does that sound like it's staying then now? It does sound, I'd heard some rumours that VR46 were looking to get a, a junior team again in Moto 3 and perhaps that was going to be at the expense of MT Helmets Moto 3 team, but it does sound like they may have four bikes on the grid, so two Moto 3s and two Moto 2s. Sounds good to me, as everyone makes the way in towards turn one. Once again, a lot of power, a lot of aggression between these lot running together. 11 to go. Canet, Gonzalez, Acosta, Dixon, Arenas, fifth place. 300 kilometers an hour for Pedro Acosta into the breakers. That's 187 miles an hour, fastest of anybody in the Moto3 field into that breaking zone. Really is giving it his all. Oh, and Canet just holding off at the front then as uh, they take back on the attack. And oh, Gonzalez twitching. Acosta would have noticed that and he will be going for that position now. Not one to look a gift horse in the mouse. Yep. Twitching again. Better exit speed. Gonzalez will be controlling that inside line and he does so coming down to out of camp, sir. Towards turn 10, Jake Dixon getting involved. We are halfway there. And Acosta's at the inside of Gonzalez in towards turn 10 for second position. He's taking him. Dixon's trying to go around the outside. Hasn't worked out. Acosta now 28 points ahead of Tony Arborino in the championship. And that is pitch perfect as to what is happening right now in the running order. But can now Jake Dixon get ahead of Gonzalez out of the last corner? He'll pull the throttle back and head straight down towards turn one. Some 860 odd meters. Temperature now at 26 degrees out there as well. Down towards turn one. No one looks like they're going to go for a move at this opportunity. So they've all decided to lift and coast at the moment. Let's take a replay. We'll go to, to TNT. Saw that, decided he needed to make the move into turn 10, and 
by the braking zone for turn one. He's right back on Aaron Cannon's rear wheel. So yeah, clever riding here from Pedro Acosta. Was Jake Dixon shaping up for a move there? Yeah, Way Jake won't, to the inside. He won't waste any time. I wasn't actually keeping my eye on him. I was looking at the lap times. But um, yeah, if Jake sees that. Uh, Manuel Gonzalez could lose a little bit of ground. He'd be looking to find a way through quick smart. And as you say, Albert Arenas is there lurking. Sergio Garcia has shown that he's strong on tyres um, in the latter stages. So maybe Cito Pons in his last ever Grand Prix. And of course, this is his home venue. He's from this part of Spain. 88 and 89, 250cc world champion Cito. And he'd love to do it here, wouldn't he? His last appearance as a team owner. Indeed. More of a London boy these days, always he safe in, <laughs> in Heathrow Airport. Um, yeah, he's... Uh... Well, you said you've been hanging out with him in Mayfair or something. <laughs> I know what you're like, hobnobbing, Michael. He invited me down last year, whenever I remember calling up, and he's like, oh, it's beautiful here in London, just sat in the sun. And, uh, yeah, he loves it there. It seems like he's, um, he's well settled into the culture. Yeah, Petra Costa still in second position, and Kinnett still leading this race. Ten laps to go. Look at Jake Dixon. Dixon still so behind. Agua, long lap penalty. So they've changed to Gura now as well as they come out down towards turn number one. Gonzalez down to third. Can it lead to Costa? Can Dixon get ahead of him now down towards the first corner? Late on the brakes. Vietti with the track limits warning. Dixon's going for third. And it's side by side. And he's going to take him. Dixon goes into third position. Manuel Gonzalez down into fourth. Femini Gura has been given a long lap penalty for uh, exceeding track limits. Now, it's 12.40, coming up was 12.39.35. So, yeah, Vietti track limits warning. We've got a track limits warning for Ruzi as well. And for Sergio Garcia, it comes up on the time of screen now. So they're all getting the track limits warning, which basically means you're on your final warning before you have to start taking penalties for cutting the inside zone of the track. Garcia has now been warned about that fact over his official FIM dashboard system of communications of how they talk to the riders. They're practicing with some team radio as well. They've done that and the Jerez test earlier on this year, practicing uh, radio communication between both the teams and the riders and race control and the riders. Riders say they love it. Uh, I think it's a great idea because it's, uh, it's just another form of communication, another form of having them safer out there on the track and there's nothing better than safety so i'm all for it personally and fingers crossed they will remain that way going into the future gonzalez then has taken it so it's coming through nine laps to go then in the catalan grand prix about to cross the line to start eight laps to go very close across that line as well if they do it and eight to go and look at Jake Dixon, he's got right in the slipstream of Pedro Acosta down towards Turn 1, but Acosta's going to go there on the brakes and try and take Canaan. Oh, he thought about it, such a late close. The top three are separated by 0.136. A tenth and a bit. Now three tenths separate them. This is so close racing. And think about it, three tenths in Formula 1 separates one car between the other. We've got three riders together, all separated by three tenths. And four riders separated, well, five riders separated by less than a second. So in the space of one F, two F1 cars with a DRS train, you've got five riders all in a second. And you wonder why MotoGP and Moto2 and Moto3 are so much more exciting. Because there is overtake after overtake after overtake. Dixon really wants to have a go here. Having a good run out of nine. Down towards turn 10. Don't touch the green. Acosta's going for it, low on the brakes. Acosta going for the lead now, and Kelly to turn 10 and takes the lead. But he goes too deep. Kinnett gets the cut back and retakes the lead. But Acosta's not going to leave that there. Oh, he's going to go for it on the inside of turn 12. Brilliant move from Pedro Acosta inside on at turn 12. Forces out and Kinnett wide. And Pedro Acosta, the championship leader, takes the lead of the Catalan Grand Prix. But now these two fighting, that's going to give the slipstream to Jake Dixon and Gonzalez and Arenas. Down towards turn one, you can hear the cheers. Acosta leads. 
Will it be the same? 600 odd meters later, Dixon to the inside line. He's going with Kinnett. Acosta leads into one. Aaron Kinnett, Jake Dixon, Gonzalez, Arenas, top five. They're the five in the hunt for this race win. We've been complaining this season quite a lot. I know we all have about Moto2 not being as exciting as, uh, as many other series, but we're changing our minds now. Kinnett trying to look on the inside line. Acosta defending. Acosta currently on 201 points. Albuino on 164. Agura, again, has been given a long lap penalty. Jake Dixon looking to the inside line at turn five on Aaron Kinnett. Can't get through. Now, Jake started on pole position. Saved his tyres. All ready for this. Acosta from down in Mercia. Canet from Valencia way. And Jake Dixon from Dover in Kent. Just sat there in third. Manu Gonzalez is not out of this yet, but I would suggest it's more because the pace has stayed pretty steady in the mid 45s. I'm waiting for someone, Michael to start to take the risk, someone to start to push on the pace again. Yeah, I think the, the pace did drop a little bit in the last lap because of the back and forth with Acosta and Canet around this section of the racetrack. I think on this lap, maybe Acosta's back to a, a low 45, and I do think it's a bit of a struggle for... Ooh, Ooh, a moment whoa. for Acosta. Acosta had a moment, Acosta had a big moment turn 11 that's going to give the advantage to Cannon and Dixon coming down towards turn one so Costa's going to regroup himself try and find the right speed at the exit of New Holland the last corner boots it hard down towards turn number one it's not going to be enough with six to go Connect will have the slipstream he will try one ball with Jake Dixon now looking ahead 290 kilometers now Dixon's going for second place regardless and he's going to fight with Aaron Connect side by side Acosta's practically right in their reach as well Dixon round the outside at two completes the move into three, he's got it done. Jake Dixon retakes second position in the Catalan Grand Prix, and he's going to go after Pedro Costa now. Aaron Canet stays in third. Going to try and have a go back at Jake in towards turn three. Up the hill into Repsol, and he's taken him. Canet back into second position. Dixon down into third. Really close battling between these lot. As uh, Sam Lowe's has been given a track limits warning. Uh, as well, so I'm not sure where that's all come from. Uh, it hasn't told us, just, just track limits warning. And Kinnett back in second position, Jake Dixon leading. Now it's Boyan, Gonzalez and Arenas. It's bringing in Lopez, Garcia, Agura and Lowe's as well. They're not out of it yet. We can have a real grandstand finish this one. Oh, hello. What was that? Long lap penalty for Femi Agura uh, due to incorrect uh, location. Yeah, incorrect long lap penalty for Femi for Femi He's been giving it again, so he's got to do it again, like we saw in Moto3 early on today. So, another change there as they come through. And Acosta from Kenneth Dixon, one, two, three, in this insane Moto2 race. They will have the toe into the last corners now. Back on the power, and there goes Acosta, there goes Acosta going wide again. Kenneth's going to go through the last corner. That's a practice for the last lap, isn't it? He wants to know, if I, can I lead if I get out of there? Answer is, yes, he would. So Acosta down to second. Kenneth's got the speed coming out of the last corner, so he's practiced that last lap dive. And now Dixon's going to go through as Acosta takes the lead again. Kenneth's going to go side by side with Jake Dixon. Jake nearly loses on the inside line to one. Kenneth holding the inside line. Jake's down to third place again. Fantastic as they come through and still in a battle between each other. Wow. Side by side stuff. Roberts, Agura, and Vietti now in a battle. And there goes Kinnett on the inside of four. Super late. And Aaron Kinnett takes the lead of the race. Acosta's going to go wide. Dixon's going to go through. And that's crucial. Dixon knows he probably couldn't get ahead of Acosta, but he can get ahead of Aaron Kinnett. He's done it twice already. Philip Salak has come into the pit lane and he's retired from this race. So out goes Salak and Kinnett's now in a battle. Let's have a replay. Oh my God, what a lunch from downtown. He didn't want to, to give it up on that lap. He led across the lane. He was third on the break. And so Gonzalez, he Gonzalez, thought, you know, I'm not, Acosta. Not today. I went around the outside of Jake on the brakes and then immediately dive bumped Pedro Acosta into turn four. And Acosta's lost out to Albert Arenas now. Arenas has taken third and Manuel Gonzalez has passed Acosta as well. So Acosta's dropped out completely from this race lead. And now Jake Dixon can set an opportunity to win his second ever race. Oh, he knows he can get past Aaron Kinnett. And speaking as a Brit, this is looking very nice indeed. Now, Arenas in third, Gonzalez fourth, Acosta in fifth. 
holding it together. So Costa's now dropped to the back of this little battle, but he's got Lopez and Garcia and Agua right there. And a challenge maybe from Sam Lowe's. I think he might just be a bit too far back as they exit the last corner. Four laps to go at the Catalan Grand Prix. An insane race continuing on. And Dixon's going for the lead. Down towards turn one. He's already passed Canet twice today. Third time's a charm in towards turn one. Jake Dixon leads, goes in too deep. Connect first right around the outside. So maybe it was once, twice, three times, not so good. So Canet leads, and now Dixon's fallen under attack to Albert Arenas all of a sudden. I don't know how that's happened as they get back on the power. So Canet, Dixon, Arenas, Gonzalez, Acosta, two tenths of a second, then it's Lopez and Garcia. So they're all again closing together at the front. It is an amazing Moto2 Catalan Grand Prix. Once again, showing exactly what this championship is about, exactly why this championship is here, and exactly what it needs to do to succeed as they continue pushing again. Kenneth leads, Dixon second, Arenas third, Gonzalez fourth, Acosta fifth, Lopez sixth, six tenths of a gap, then it's Garcia, Agura, Lowe's, Vietti, Roberts, Baltus, Agura, and then it's Alcoba and Chantra, Songkat Chantra rounds out the points paying positions. And the gap between those points paying positions is only nine seconds. Dixon's going for the lead at turn 10 on the inside line of Eric Kinnett and he's going to take it. Kinnett's going to be getting the comeback on the inside line. Dixon still down, has the power and Dixon takes the lead. And now Acosta is battling hard with Manuel Gonzalez. Gonzalez keeps fourth place. Acosta can't find a way through. Here comes Alonso Lopez. So we've got a three-way battle at the front for one, two, three. And then another three-way battle between four, five, and six. Insane. Now across the line. Three laps to go. Dixon goes defensive. Kinnett's going to have him, though, down towards turn one. Dixon knows that. They've left Albert Arenas behind for dust, though. Kinnett goes to the inside line. On the brakes, though, Dixon's got him. Lopez and a cost touch. And they're both going to run wide, and that's going to allow Gonzalez to go through. And Acosta has taken the long lap penalty and has lost three places. Comes out ahead, though, of Lopez. And I think it's going to be a Gua. Can't tell, quite tell the time it's green. Gonzalez, Acosta, Garcia, Lopez. Dixon leads from Connect, and I think Acosta might get a penalty for that if he's determined to have gained a position, but he was forced off the track, so I don't think it's going to be that bad. Dixon versus Kanat now are going to be for the rest of this race. Dixon's looking a bit untidy coming into turn five. Kanat's going to just keep it together. This is the Catalan Grand Prix, and this is an absolutely superb race. It is constantly giving us action, constantly getting us into the groove, as they turn once again. Dixon from Kinnett, Arenas comes over across the line, down towards the breaking zone. And nothing can happen there, unfortunately, it's turn 10. So Dixon's had the lead. Bad time for a picture breakup. I thought Dixon had gone down mid-corner there. I just held myself as well on mute uh, in case. Dixon, Kinnett, there's all the flags coming around on the inside line there as well. Holding it together. Dixon's got the advantage still, and it's now in the last quarter, two to go. Kanet's not going to practice that run once more. He knows he could probably get the slipstream together if it's needed. Across the line, though, two to go. Jake Dixon pulled out now, two tenths of a gap to Aaron Kanet. Can he take a second career race win? Gonzalez fighting for fourth with Sergio Garcia. Garcia on a new livery bike this weekend. It's hard to find out where he is sometimes, but he's there battling for uh, fourth place. Acosta down to sixth. All this helps Tony Arborino, who is pointless this weekend. He is down in 17th place. So the championship, as it stands, will have Acosta on 186 points. Tony Arborino is on 164. That's 22 back. Jake Dixon, with the race win, will move within 44 points of the championship lead. 1-4-2. And Kennett on 116, 70 points back. But it puts Dixon up there for a championship fight, like Sam Lowe's was a couple of years ago, uh, when he had a chance to become world champion, but crashed at Portimao at the end of 2021 and uh, damaged his wrist as well. It was a shattering, shattering heartbreak. Dixon's holding it together. Can, it was crushed in practice, actually, didn't he? 
Kinnett's trying to go around the outside. Dixon, again, holding this lead. He's got his nerve back, as on the inside, Gonzalez is passed by Sergio Garcia. He's gone down the inside line at turn 11. Garcia's gonna get the cut back, though, and nope, nope, Garcia shuts the door. Gonzalez has taken it down to fifth. Garcia up to fourth. And I would settle for a very dull last lap if it means Jake Dixon wins again, but I don't think we're gonna get that. Kinnett's right there, Kinnett, he's gonna be versing Dixon. It's going to be Great Britain versus Spain once more. This time it's not the Women's FA Cup Final. Oh, it's not the Women's World Cup Final. It's the Men's Catalan Grand Prix race victory. Down towards turn number one for the last time. Jake Dixon is holding off Aaron Kinnett. Round the outside, not going to work. Dixon, two and a half tenths ahead. It's one, but goes a little bit too deep. Kinnett closes him back up. Really tight stuff, and Dixon really has choked it towards turn one. Kinnett's got such an exit speed through two and three. Aaron Kinnett's going to take the race lead away from Jake Dixon, surely coming towards turn four. Dixon goes defensive. Kinnett's biding his time. He knows where he can pass on this track, and he knows how he can be passed. We're in for another grandstand finish for Moto3 to Moto E's to Moto2. Let's hope MotoGP is going to be as good into the braking zone. Kanet still holding back. Dixon's got it through. Seven and eight. The whole of the UK cheering on Jake Dixon right now. They know what they want to see. Can this be another race win for Jake Dixon? Can this be Netherlands 23? Kanet looking around the outside. We're into the final sector. Turn 10, Dixon goes wide, Kinnett's going to go on him, side by side. Dixon holds through. Kinnett's right there. Oh, Dixon losing the rear of the bike. Two corners left, Kinnett nearly drops in. They're both pushing to the absolute limit of what is possible. Into the last corner, Kinnett's going to go to the inside line. Dixon jumps him off. It's a drag race to the line. Dixon's got the exit. Dixon's got the corner. Dixon's got the race. Jake Dixon wins for a second time in 2023 and his career. It's Brits on top in Moto2. And Jake Dixon is a two-time winner. The TT and the Catalan Grand Prix. Canet second, Albert Arenas third, Sergio Garcia fourth, Manuel Gonzalez fifth, Pedro Costa sixth, Ayagua Lopez lose in ninth. Vietti 10th, Roberts, Boltus, Agura, Chantra, Alcoba round out the points. And look at where Tony Alberino finished in 17th place. It is Britain's Jake Dixon who wins the Catalan Grand Prix in Moto2 and puts himself back in the title hunt. Absolutely spectacular racing unbelievable well done jake dixon superb brilliant grand prix brit wins again connect second abonnes third title contenders acosta sixth arborino 17th an ultimate brilliant race two tenths at the line jake dixon wins the catalan grand prix <laughs> So Jake Dixon for the second time wins, doing push-ups down at Turn 1. Absolutely fantastic. Aaron Kinnett second and Albarena's third. The title hopes again change. Now, Petro Costa 22 points ahead of Tony Albarino, who is pointless here today. And, and now Jake Dixon comes within those 44. Wheelies all up. Britain's on top. Well done, Jake Dixon. Join us for the San Marino Grand Prix the next time. Moto2, go racing.